Glenn Hobbs was initiated into a satanic coven as a child by his grandfather and continued participating for many years. I recently asked Glenn about his involvement and the importance of Halloween to the occultist. Well, my involvement in uh, satanic worship was I was involved in it as a child. Of course, I was a generational Satanist, what they call a generational Satanist. And what that means is that my family was involved in it and their family before them. Now, my earliest rememberings of Halloween and some of the things that were involved was it was a very dark time for me as a child. It was something that um, I didn't enjoy. Glenn, could you tell us about your involvement in any rituals at Halloween as a child? There was a, another little girl that was involved in the, uh, the occult with me, and her name was Becky. Now, Becky was another, a different type of child. She was uh, blessed to be a sacrifice. I was being blessed to be a high priest, where she was being blessed and born into the, the coven there to be a sacrifice. Now, we were in a ritual where we were married together. Um, it was a marriage to the beast. And uh, me and the little girl were married together, and there was a lot of sexual abuse that took place, and a, a lot of blood that was spilt over us, joining us together. When do Halloween rituals actually begin, and what is the ultimate purpose of Halloween? Well, the ritual that I remember the most clearly um, began about the end of September. Um, me and the little girl, the one I mentioned named Becky, the, the abuse was very concentrated at that time. Uh, we were taken into several rooms where our clothing was removed. We spent the next couple of weeks in a kind of a shack where a lot of rituals went on, where a lot of animals were, were killed. Um, they summoned Lucifer and his spirit to come and uh, possess me and so that I would be blessed to take over the position of the high priest at a certain point in time. Um, now, Halloween night, um, they had again put me and the little girl in the, in the back of this van and we again drove off, which seemed like for a long time. We were drugged once again. And we finally came to this stop. They took the little girl out and they left me in the van. Um, I could hear a lot of commotion that was going on outside. Uh, people that were, were screaming and, and yelling and, and uh, this low murmuring and moaning noise that was going on, like some kind of a low chanting noise that was going on. So I knew in my mind there was some type of a ritual going on because I'd heard that many times before. You know, it was real common to see people fall on the ground and, and convulse and, and go into convulsions during rituals and stuff with the demonic presence that were around. And uh, finally, a woman came to the back of the van and she said, it's time to go. And she brought me out of the van, and I could see that there was just a lot of people around. Uh, some were dressed in uh, dark brownish kind of robes with hoods over them. They took me up, and they led me up to this stone altar. And uh, I remember I saw the little girl, and she was on the altar. Now, at first, you know, I, I just wondered what was going on because you never knew. I mean, they used the altar for a lot of different things. They could have just been sacrificing an animal over, could have been a sexual abuse from the high priest on to her. You know, it was a hard thing to, to know for sure. Well, they finally, they ushered me up to the altar and I could see that they had bound her feet. They had, they had her feet spread apart, her legs, and they had bound them to the ends of the altar and they had taken her arms, which were laying out this way, and roped them to the altar, which had little kind of like hooks, which they could bind the ropes around. And she was really white. Just, I, I, I remember seeing her and she was just real pale and real white. And I noticed that they had slit the bottoms of her feet and her wrists and they were taking the blood that was running out of those 
areas and putting them into chalices and passing those cups around to different people who were partaking of her blood. Then the, the high priest, he took the athami or the ritual knife and he picked it up and he put my hand on it and then he forced it into her chest. So when I think back on Halloween, you know, over that period of time that happened, you know, that was the climax event, Halloween night, where they, they killed that innocent little girl. And this is something that's happening every Halloween. That's not just an isolated event. I mean, there are children all over the world who are losing their lives during Halloween night, and yet we, as a society, we go out and celebrate it, and we go door to door, and we ask for candy, and it's a, it's a big celebration to us. And I think it's quite ironic how one group of people are thinking it's fun, and another group of people are taking human life. And yet, they don't, you know, there seems to be this wall, and nobody wants to face the facts of what's really going on.